Why not, Jesus, turn these stones into bread? Why not throw yourself down from here? Just like the devil tricked Adam and Eve with that sly question in the garden. Did God really say this about this tree? The trick of the devil hasn't changed one iota from the very beginning until Jesus' day and even until now. He continues to test us in regards to our identity. Are we who we say we are? And then he offers one of his ways to prove it, which would be the equivalent of taking us off course. It would be the spiritual equivalent of giving up our identity in exchange for the devil's identity that he wants us to take. We have many uh, different ID cards, don't we, that we carry, right? You got some ID cards with you today? I have my driver's license in here. Uh, possibly you have a blood donor ID card from the Red Cross. We might have membership cards for any number of certain groups that identify us to, to you know, wherever we've joined. As part of Jesus' baptized family, it is that family through which we receive the most important identity that we can ever know. Jesus' calling is different, of course, in a little way from our calling. He had a particular vocation that God had laid out for him to be God's Messiah. But his identity as a beloved son of God is an identity that we also receive in our baptism, along with our calling to give ourselves in service and in ministry to others. Jesus knew himself to be God's servant, as prophesied about in the servant psalms of Isaiah, the servant who would give himself to the world and for others. He would live by God's word. He wouldn't require it or rely on a spectacular show to gain the approval of all. He wasn't ashamed to even share in the hunger of all. And he's not ashamed to take upon the same risks that others have to take in their daily life. He is the incarnation of God. He lives fully alongside his neighbors in flesh and blood as one of them. And just as Jesus was sent on a self-giving mission, so we are also commissioned and sent in our baptism to serve our neighbor. In the baptismal vows that we confess Jesus Christ as our Savior, we also promise to serve Him as our Lord in union with the church, and we receive an identity in covenant with the family of faith, being born again of water and the Spirit. That identity tells us that, first of all, we are loved and treasured. We are priceless to God beyond measure. So treasured and loved are we that Jesus went to the cross and completely emptied himself on our behalf. And just like Jesus was, we are sure to be challenged again and again with the devil's attempt to steal our identity. It isn't about just being tempted to indulge in that, that sweet thing or that fatty thing we've sworn off for Lent, you know, as good as for discipline as those practices might be. But the temptations the devil really wants to get us with, those that entice us from being the witness in the world that we are called to be. It would be so obvious for Satan to put the question before us as plainly as he did for Jesus in that third temptation. You know, Jesus, let's forget all this pretty stuff. I'll just give you, this is the way it's going to be. I'll give you all the kingdoms. Just bow down and worship me. Forget God. Serve me. No. He knows that such an obvious invitation will be met with the same response that Jesus gave him. Away, Satan. Away. You're not going to get me like that. But no, that's, we know that's not how the old devil works, right? The old devil puts in front of us those temptations in the form of things that seem so nice, so pretty, even, even godly, just like he did for Jesus. He wraps them up in those shiny, attractive packages that looks like God could have laid them down right in front of us. Temptations may even come with a scripture verse on the sticker right there by your name, right? Things like opportunities that promise a lot of money so that we can get the best that money can buy and have the power to do what we want to do and to be... To, to shield ourselves from any risk in life. Doing what the popular opinion tells us we should do. 
because then we can be looked up and be held highly by all. Yet in these and in a thousand other temptations that come our way, the devil is offering nothing more than a pittance in return for us giving up our identity in Christ to him and therefore giving up our witness. Brothers and sisters, let us keep close to our heart today and every day that we are Jesus' own. We have been bought with a price. Jesus paid that price and we belong to him. He loves us endlessly. He opens up to us the storehouse of God's blessings. God doesn't need a flashy show. God doesn't need a superman or a superwoman. And Jesus didn't, didn't, as Jesus didn't hesitate to completely take on the flesh and blood life of his fellow first century Jews, so Jesus calls us to also give of ourselves, to share that life that Jesus has given to us, and to share with our neighbors lovingly. Yes, sometimes that comes with quite a challenge, quite a temptation to, to draw inward. And yet Jesus promises, as we give ourselves to others, the Lord will sustain us, not only in bread, but with every word that comes from the mouth of God. May that identity stay with us day by day. May we live secure in it always.